In this video we're going over the most unique rings in WoW, be it their abilities, use, acquisition, or just a thing. And at number 10 on this list we have the One Ring. Added in patch 1.11, this ring is a reference to J.R.R. Tolkien's One Ring from The Lord of the Rings. It's a ring only obtainable by players from fishing, kind of like how the ring was found in the movies and book. This ring has two key things of note. First off, its low level and way of obtaining it made it actually a good ring to get, especially as the plus one to all primary stats was somewhat decent. Of course, for some classes and specs, some of these stats were useless though. Another unique version added in the Burning Crusade is called the Two Ring, which is funnily mentioned in the One Ring's description as being better. It used to provide 22 to each of the primary stats, but this has since been changed with the various stat and item level squishes, now sitting at only three of each stat. Another ring called the Five Ring added in patch 3.1 was just another fun nod added by the developers once again as it originally granted 55 to all stats. However, this time stamina, hit rating, and critical strike rating instead of all primary stats. And just like the one and two rings, it had some interesting flavor text, this time saying that it ate the three and four rings. Which was probably just a fun way of explaining why they skipped straight to the five ring to keep up with stat inflation that happens between expansions. All three rings can be obtained through fishing, which is how Deagle found the one ring in Tolkien's books. But if you don't feel like fishing for them, they are sometimes sold in the auction house for extremely high amounts of gold, as all of them are bind on equip. And at number nine, we have the Seal of Ascension. Back when WoW used to have those insanely long entombments, players needed to grind out in order to do things. One of those grinds was getting this ring. It gave the person who got it the ability to open the doors leading to the upper Blackrock Spire. The Seal of Ascension was somewhat difficult to obtain though, as it required the player to complete a quest aptly called the Seal of Ascension, which required you to enter a lower Blackrock Spire and obtain four gems from various bosses in the dungeons. However, this being vanilla, only one dropped at a time per group, and they didn't have a 100% drop chance either, which meant rolling against your allies. Once you got these four gems, you would need to turn in the quest, then head over to Dustwall of Marsh all the way across the world, and work with an ancient drake, Ember Strife, to forge the seal, which requires fighting his enraged form and then mind controlling him when he's low in order to forge the ring. The ring itself wasn't that bad. While it didn't increase DPS, it was an overall resistance stat ring, so it was good for certain fights that needed resist gear. But even after replacing this ring, it always had a use, seeing as it was used to unlock the door in the first place. This ring also had another use. In Upper Black Ark Spire, if the group managed to reach the Rend Blackhand encounter, if they used this ring, it summoned Valen to heal the group. Although this was actually unique to the ring, as there was no flavor text on it, or an on-use effect, that let the group know that it was impossible to do this in the first place. When Blizzard redesigned Upper Black Rock Spire and made the door always unlocked, this ring lost the majority of its value, seeing it's now basically useless and only a nice nostalgia trip of the attunement long since past. And at number 8, we have one more reference to Lord of the Ring movies. A unique ring called the Precious Bloodthorn Loop. This ring, added in 6.0, drops in Warlords of Draenor's version of Shadowmoon Valley from a rare pale orc named Gorum. An obvious reference to Tolkien's Golem, who was a pale and deformed hobbit who carried the One Ring for a long time until Bilbo lied and stole it from him. This ring has an on-use effect that deals some damage to you with a 5 minute cooldown, which is not very good in my opinion. Oh wait, that's not all. It, it also turns you invisible, just like the ring from the movies. This ring was a nice aggro reset, as the developers said we weren't going to have flying in World War II Draenor at all. So every class being able to reset mobs, similar to Feign Death for Hunters or Vanish for Rogues, was super useful. Though it admittedly didn't see much use, as normally buying potions can seem like a waste, but World of the Draenor let us build some things from any profession that we wanted. And because of this, even if you were not an alchemist, you could just make your own invisibility potions instead. While this ring did save you from wasting money on potions, having to give up a ring slot to use it in top end content like challenge modes was not really worth it. It was fun to mess with people in PvP at least though. So while it's not the best, it was a very fun ring to use. And today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is a place with high quality tutorial videos that can teach you how to do whatever you might want. I've used Skillshare in the past to learn a whole bunch of skills related to YouTube, like video editing, graphic design, marketing, and last year I even used it to learn how to juggle. And recently I've been streaming a lot more, so I looked at some courses on voice acting and regular acting to try to improve on those. So it's a site that I've had a subscription to for a long time and will probably keep having it, 
Mainly because doing YouTube the way I do requires a ton of random skills that you might never think about. And it's much better to get those skills from a dedicated website than to watch a low edited video on YouTube which might not even have the correct information. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. Use my link in the video description for one free month for the first 1,000 people who use the link. And at number 7 we have tier set rings. Not set rings as there is many of those over the years, but tier set rings. We're all used to tier sets at this point, especially with a return in 9.2 after being removed in BFA. For most of WoW's life, we have had helmets, shoulders, chest, gloves, and legs. Although for Legion, we had capes as well. With there being two and four set bonuses, allowing you to pick and choose which pieces you wanted. But back in vanilla, and only in vanilla, we had the usual five as well as bracers, belts, boots, and rings. Allowing for not only a two and four set bonus, but also a six and eight set. This was a vanilla only thing, as with the Burning Crusade, we moved to the two four set bonuses we have today. First seeing these rings in the raid AQ20, they required you to earn various scarabs and idols, as well as ring tokens, paired them with honored Cenarian Circle Rep, and you could get yourself a ring. This ring was part of a three set bonus, specific to your class, that required you to get a cloak and a weapon. This being the first and last time we would see weapons being part of a class set. Although this class set was not really that special. For example, the Warlock one being 5% increased damage from your summon demons. Overall, rather minor compared to some of the others, really. We then move on to Naxxramas, the final raid tier of Classic. The final time we would have an 8 set bonus, and the final time we would have tier set ranks. For a comparison example, Warlocks again, this set gave your Shadow Bolt a chance to heal you on hit, a 12% increase to your corruption damage, making your crits and dots generate 25% less threat, and lastly, reducing the health consumed by life tap. Overall, a real great series of set bonuses. But back to these rings. They were all dropped from the raid's final boss, Kel'Thuzad, each one with about a 20% drop rate. They were heavily sought after, and rightfully so. Especially as the Naxxorama sets, better known as Tier 3, were removed from the game with the revamp of Nax and Wrath of the Lich King. However, these sets were re-added to the game through the Black Market Auction House, allowing those with large amounts of gold to buy the transmogs, even allowing people to buy class armors which they were normally not able to obtain, and even use their transmogs. For example, a warlock with the priest's shoulders. However, the rings of these sets don't have visuals and are the only pieces actually class locked, meaning they don't appear in the Black Market Auction House. So having one of these rings is hard proof that you did Naxxramas back in the days of Vanilla or TBC. And at number 6 we have the Nagel Ring and the Freezing Ban. One of the best rings for tanking at low levels in Vanilla was the Nagel Ring. It had a unique ability which caused attackers to take arcane damage when they hit the user, making holding aggro on groups of enemies much easier. Especially during a time when tanks had limited AoE damage and threat being a lot harder to hold. The ring is unique because it's actually still obtainable to this day from Golan Lord Algramark in Blackrock Depths. The addition of this ring is extremely similar to the ring of the same name and similar effect found in Diablo 2. It was also added in Diablo 3, but it was changed from what it was previously to summon little explosive demon companions. It's also possible that Blizzard named this ring from real life sources, such as the German legend Albrecht, as it's about a dwarf who created the Nagelring, which the boss from WoW's version drops the ring being a dwarf as well. And before we move on, we also have the Freezing Band from Vanilla WoW. An extremely rare drop chance from mobs level 50 to 55, and had a unique effect of inflicting frost damage to attackers and then freezing them for 5 seconds, with a 1% chance to proc. This ring also had the added benefit for frost mages, not only that it increased frost damage, but they also had tons of talents and abilities to sometimes freeze enemies who hit them, so adding this on top of that just kind of helped. Especially since if a target was frozen by hitting the mage, they could then hit them with Shatter, dealing bonus damage, which did work with this ring's freeze effect. The effect applied by this ring did not break when damaging the mob who was frozen either, and it's also not a unique equip, meaning you could wear two of these if you wanted for a grand total of a 2% proc rate. It also worked in PvP and was useful against other mages or fascinating classes like rogues, but besides some playing around and having fun, it was quickly replaced, seeing as the stats weren't great and fishing for a 1% proc is kind of hard, as outside of solo content or PvP enemies, you're not going to be attacked very much as a mage, so you won't be procking the ring, and the other rings you were able to get this level were just far better than what this could offer. And at number 5 we have the Dread Pirate Ring. 
This ring is only obtainable by fishing, which is a unique case, seeing as this was the first heirloom ring added back in Wrath of the Lich King. Originally, it was a reward for winning the Kaloak Fishing Derby, which was a fishing event that was held every Sunday between 2 to 3 p.m. server time. This event required players to race and see which fisherman could first catch a black tip shark and bring it to Elder Clearwater in Dalaran, and was added in patch 3.3. There was also an event in Vanilla WoW called the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza that was added in patch 1.7, which took place every Sunday as well, which required the player to catch spectral tasty fish that they could turn in for prizes, like the Argonite Fishing Pole, which was the best fishing pole in the game at the time. However, with Blizzard's cross-realm zoning added in patch 5.04, it caused troubles for both of the fishing events and made them almost impossible to do, so they just removed both of the events from the game. Blizzard did end up eventually fixing the cross-realm problems and just added the rewards from the fishing derby to the Stranglethorn fishing extravaganza instead, only bringing back the Stranglethorn event. So to get the ring now, you have to win at least second place, which isn't too hard nowadays, but depending on what server you're on, it can be difficult, seeing as this ring is still sought after to this day. And at number 4, we have the Ring of the Kirin Tor. This ring is sold by Harold Winston in Dalaran, and could even be upgraded to stronger item level versions of itself. This ring allows the player to teleport when it's used, and it was quite expensive when it was originally added in patch 3.08, as it cost 8,500 gold if you were neutral to Kirin Tor, luckily dropping down to 6,800 if you became exalted with them. Which was quite easy as Wrath of the Lich King offered tabards, which could be equipped and run in dungeons over and over for rep gains. Seeing as the only way to reach Wrath of Lich King's version of Dalaran, and hear how you should raise your eyes to the skies and observe again, was through a mage portal, had your hearthstone set there, or got yourself a Jaina's Locket, which was obtained and purchased from someone who was doing the Shadowmourne questline. So, having another way of reaching the main city if your hearthstone was on cooldown, was a luxury that was always landing a spot in players' backpacks. Especially considering the ring doesn't share a cooldown with other teleports, and could be obtained from day one, instead of having to wait till the end of Wrath of Lich King for Jaina's Locket, for example. It also doesn't have a grace period where after equipping an item it has to reset a short cooldown, meaning the player could use it immediately after equipping it. This ring is still used quite often to this day, just for its sheer convenience alone, and is well worth the effort to get it, along with the gold price, which these days is rather pathetic, really. We've had many rings since then just like this, but this was the first one. Legion had an updated version of the Curantor ring, However, it was for the Broken Isles Dalaran. We also had the Karazhan, Kul'Turas, Slash Zandalar, and even the Brawler's Guild Rings. And at number 3, we have the Jeweled Signet to Melandris. This ring, added in Legion, dropped from the Court of Stars' final boss, Advisor Melandris, and is overall a rather basic ring, except it does one very special thing. It increases your auto attack damage, something I don't think any item has ever done. Of course, really every item that increases your attack power increases your auto attack damage in some capacity. No item has specifically increased just your auto attack damage, which is part of what makes it quite powerful. A go-to item for players, especially since it comes from Legion. The expansion to introduce Mythic Plus dungeons, allowing dungeon gear from even the most basic dungeons to be relevant, to maybe even more powerful than the highest item levels you can get from raid gear. Especially since the introduction of Legion Time Walking, with Legion Time Walking allowing us to do Legion Mythic Plus dungeons again, this item will always be relevant in this very expansion of Shadowlands and in every future expansion, as even in 15.0, when we're fighting the super ultra mega ones, we will still be able to do Mythic Plus Court of Stars and obtain this ring at a very decent item level. Unless Blizzard decides to disable its effect in the future, like they planned on doing when they first announced Legion Time Walking. And at number 2, we have the ring for all you gamblers out there. The Ring of Collapsing Futures, which is dropped by Visidoom, the final boss of Return to Karazhan. Now, what did this ring do? Well, its tooltip simply states, On use, deals shadow damage to an enemy, 15 second cooldown. But tooltips can be deceiving. What this ring actually did was deal some shadow damage and go on a 15 second cooldown. However, it would then give you a debuff called Temptation that lasted for 30 seconds. While you had this debuff, if you use the ring again, it would have a chance to backfire and go on a 5 minute cooldown. The debuff also stacked, so what this meant is there are two types of players who would have this ring. The first kind, the ones who are careful and collective. They simply use the ring, then wait 30 seconds for the debuff to drop, allowing them to use the ring again with no chance at it backfiring. However, the second kind are the gamblers. These are the ones who would pop it every 15 seconds on the dot, to try to get as much DPS as possible, 
all while risking an ever-increasing chance for it to backfire and be locked out of it for 5 minutes. Because of course you could use it twice and get locked out of using it for 5 minutes. Or maybe there is that chance that you might be able to use it 10 times in a row without backfiring, massively increasing your DPS, especially as the ring could be used mid-cast. So, which type of player do you think you are? And last, but definitely not least, the Nobleman's Elementium Signet and the Black Diamond Ring. These two rings are rather basic. Common rarity, no stats, unique equipped, and weirdly expensive. So, what puts them on this list? Necklaces, trinkets, and rings are the only three, or five depending on how you consider it, equipment slots that have no visuals and never have. Well, to be honest, that's kind of a lie. Not only because the legendary neck from Molten Core had a visual, and the Heart of Azeroth necklace had a model that we never got to wear, but because these two rings exist. You heard me right, these two rings are the only rings in the game to have a visual effect. The Nobleman's Elementium Signet, while worn, causes your right hand to sparkle white every so often. Meanwhile, the Black Diamond Ring causes a large purple gem to appear on your right hand's finger that sparkles purple every so often. Now, that alone would be enough to make these rings super cool. They also got alternate versions. With the launch of Legion, we got a toy version of these two rings, which have a permanent duration, allowing you to simply activate them from your toy box and have a permanent bling, without needing to worry about the loss of stats for wearing a statless ring. Something that is more unique than any other ring could hope to accomplish. Something introduced all the way back in the Burning Crusade, but weirdly enough, have yet to see done again seven expansions since. Unless you count a Black Ice. No, not that Black Ice. This Black Ice. A ring quest reward introduced in Cataclysm with the reworked Zul'Garub, once raid, now dungeon. This ring used the exact same visual as the Black Diamond, and just like the Black Diamond was transformed into a toy come Legion. So for those of you who don't want to drop 5k gold on a vendor item, instead go do the super short quest line starting with the Booty Bay's interest and ending with a shiny reward. All within the heroic Zul'Garub. Honorable mentions, before we end off the video, I'm sure some of you are asking where are the Warlords of Draenor legendary rings? Or what about the Legion legendary rings? Well, I tried to keep this list to non-legendary rings only, as literally everybody already knows about the legendaries, as they always get the limelight in other videos. 